When you come into Vidoni, you'll get two different options. Press X to start and then triangle to play offline. So X is to go online, triangle is to go offline. And what I'm going to do uh, firstly is show you the offline mode and then I'm going to go back into online and then I'll go through the uh, menus and things through there. Click the offline game mode. You come into this sort of screen where at the top you've got these slides, home, play, account and options. Now, sometimes once you've clicked on to uh, play offline, for example, you get this home screen and sometimes it takes a while to load up just because the game's rendering or something like that. Um, so don't be worried if you if you feel like your game's froze, just give it give it a few seconds and eventually it will load up. So if we go onto the play slide now, all you can see is I've got front lines, squad, defense and custom. Now these are the three game modes which you can play uh, via the offline mode. Now squad defense is just um, you versus a wave of enemies uh, and you have to survive for as many waves as you can almost like zombies in Call of Duty or some other sort of wave based game mode like that. And front lines is the basic game mode on Verdun where you have to take the enemy's trench, they have to take yours, you have to defend yours and, and they defend theirs and, and, and so forth so uh, that's the main game mode. Now custom game uh, allows you to moderate either front lines or squad defense so for example here you can see game type i can have front lines or i can have squad defense and i can what i can do is just change whatever map i like um fill how many players i want how many bots we need uh, the difficulty the year so basically it's just the same as front lines and squad defense but you get to customize it to your own um sort of ways and, and how you want to immerse yourself in the gameplay so if you've pressed X to go online, uh, you'll get the exact same screen as you got offline. Um, you'll get this home screen. And again, if it feels like it's frozen, don't worry. It's just the game rendering. Now, if we go along to play, you'll see there's a few more game modes opened up this time. You've got front lines, squad defense, and custom as usual. But this time you've also got attrition and rival deathmatch, which are just two um, extra game modes on the game. People don't tend to play them on PlayStation 4 because there's not enough. There just doesn't seem to be enough people on the, on the game that um, play it. So the main, your primary game mode uh, for online is usually front lines, but also a lot of people like to play squad defense uh, as well. So along from the player section, you've got the account section. Now under account, you have the general, the squad, weapons, trophies and medals. And basically the account menu is all about your player, your character on this game. And you can go through and you can see what squads you've been using. Uh, you can see the weapons you've been using. For, so, for example, um, I've got nearly 24, I've got 24 hours on the Enfield Mark III. Uh, and if you're a bit of a trophy hunter or you want to get some good game score, I think it's game score on Xbox, if, if I remember correctly. You can come onto the account, trophies, and you can see what you need and how to get them. And then finally, you've also got medals. Now, medals are like little in-game challenges which you get from maybe getting the longest kill streak, the most headshots. And in, in your account section on medals, you can see how many times you've got these medals. So, for example, um, I've got the gold medal for most kills 39 times on the game. Now, pre-update, these used to be really inaccurate. Um, they didn't used to work very well. I'm not sure if they do now, but I'd, I'd assume they do. Um, so maybe take things with a pinch of salt on here, but that's just a good way of tracking uh, your progress, I suppose, if it does work. So from account, you can go into options. Now, options are really important on this game just because they can affect your gameplay and um, they can make a break a certain parts of immersion for the game. So this is probably one of the most important parts of this tutorial. Now, uh, first of all, you want to look at your general settings. Um, these are pretty much standard. Just keep them standard unless you want to change certain things. So um, show gas warning, show game tips now you can keep them on or you can turn them off it depends how far you want to be immersed um, but that's entirely personal preference that one now we go down to the hood this is where it gets a bit more um, complicated I suppose now when I play offline I like to really um, be quite realistic I like to have all this immersion and stuff so I like to turn a lot of the support stuff off and a lot of the shit or the hood on that's on on, a, on the screen so I usually toggle off a lot of this shit um, which people don't tend to do unless they're playing offline mode, which is fair enough because online this stuff really helps you out. So you're, you're probably better off keeping it on. But again, uh, if you want to be immersed, maybe turn it off. It's up to you. Personal preference, this one. Graphics. Now, for me, I keep the graphics pretty much the same. Gamma brightness and contrast, I always keep the same. At the minute, there's a bit of a gore issue on Verdun. And um, the highest setting of gore is ultra. Now, this doesn't seem to work at the minute, so turn your uh, gore down to high and hopefully you'll see more gore graphics and then finally you want to have your motion blur and depth of field on as that improves the graphics uh, massively since the update now controls this is probably the most important part out of all the options on the game 
because especially the sensitivity part anyway um on this game even if you even if you're if you if you're experienced on first person shooters and stuff and and you're used to fast paced gameplay or you're used to um slow paced whatever you are you need to have the right sensitivity which allows you to shoot at longer ranges and shorter ranges because it, it's just one of these games where you have to have a mix of both so you can't have uh, your aim and sensitivity too low but you don't want it too high either it needs to be that right balance and that right balance for me uh for the aim and sensitivity is six now again this might be personal preference you want you might want to play the game a bit first and see what it is uh, for you um but again the sensitivity 10 seems to work perfectly fine for me horizontal 1.2 and vertical 0.8 for me them two are definitely personal preference but the aim and sensitivity if you can get used to around six that's pretty good because it gives you uh, the capability to shoot at long range but then also close range when when it gets um quite um up, up close and personal if you like um look options don't worry too much about this so if you want invert look put that on um wireless control acceleration don't worry too much about that uh toggle options this is where it gets important again manual bolting and manual reloading these are just i've got these off because the game uh, assists me reloading and stuff just because it's quicker and online if you have these settings on you've got a disadvantage because then you have to worry about bolting and reloading yourself when in reality the game can just do it for you which means you can shoot quicker so i tend to have these off um but in certain situations when i play offline for example and i want to get the immersion back up i'll toggle them on um so it again it's personal preference how you want to play the game that one toggle sprint i always have on because you don't want to be sprinting constantly because then you lose your breath when you stop and uh, sometimes you need to hold your breath when you aim and sometimes you don't so toggle sprint needs to be on uh auto sprint off toggle hold breath again this is similar to the sniper thing if you're aiming down sight and you're automatically holding your breath you're sometimes wasting your time because you don't always need to hold your breath sometimes you can save it for more severe situations sometimes you're able to look down on your sight in this game and just shoot without holding your breath and getting a really accurate sighting um so I, I like to have this um this toggle on but again this that's personal preference you can have it off it might help you on might help you as well it's it's up to you and uh finally we've got wireless controller that's just the button layouts you can change that um to however way, which way you want it's up to you audio i keep pretty much the same you want your master volume and sound uh, effects pretty high the only reason they're quite low now is because i'm recording different shit and then finally you've got your credits um and that's you know that's not too important so there there are your main settings guys there are your main options for the game so what i'm going to do now is have a look at the squads within the menu and sort of just give you a brief explanation on that so if we let's for example we click on front lines and you can see there's these different sectors going on in the world right now on the eu server um what you can do if you, you know your friends on a certain map or a certain squad you can click r1 and it'll show you all the different squads within the game so if you want to play on the uh, central powers, for example, you can find like a central powers um, squad and join them. If there's a certain role you know you like, you can find it via the squads menu. Or if you want to, you can create a new squad and join a game by pressing square. Um, and you can choose wh whichever sort of faction you'd like. Uh, this is pretty much the same with squad defense as well. You can start a new match by pressing the square button and creating a new squad. Or you can just press options on a game and it will put you straight into one of these two games um, and you will be just joining random people online. If you're playing offline, it will randomise it as well. Um, but a lot of people when they play squad defence like to use it as a practice game mode, so you're better off just pressing square, creating your own, ga uh, creating your own game and then picking your own squad, whether it be, again, central powers or the uh, allied squads. Okay, so when you're spawning, you should get a screen like this, and you should either have like a like a handgun or a, a rifle or a sniper or a machine gun or something like that. And each individual sol uh, soldier has a, a command wheel. Now, a command wheel, is, you, all you need to do is hold R1, and you get this sort of select voice. Now, because there's no game chat in this game, this is the only way you can uh, effectively communicate. So each person has one. You can uh, you you can just go around the wheel and you press R2 to select one. And as you can see, if you saw incoming enemies, you can click incoming enemies and the top left hand corner, it says my name, the squad, and then the incoming enemies. So, I don't know, let's just say there was uh, some Germans coming from the right flank uh, over there, for example. You can hold down uh, your command wheel, uh, warning, sorry, fuck that up, uh, warning, uh, enemies on the right. 
then the enemies would be on the right and then your team and your squad would know that there's enemies on the right and hopefully you'd hope they'd start putting soldiers down to the right flank or they'd start watching the right flank so the command reels uh, the command reel uh, is really important and again you can do like the um, replies and stuff so if someone said something you can put yes so you've understood it and um, it's just yeah it's just a really effective way of uh, communicating when there's no actual voice chat it's also important to sort of note as well when you're playing the game if you have a look who you are so if i go to the squad the role i'm the nco so i'm the the head of my group or the head of my squad which means i'm given an extra ability so as you know the command wheel all you have to do is hold r1 now as an nco you have a command wheel but you also have this and if you just tap r1 instead of holding it just tap what you can do is you have an ability screen where you can call in uh, a mortar, but you can also tell your team where to go. So I can press this and my team will go. There's a little blue marker there. It's just like a bit like if you, I don't know if anyone's ever played um, Brothers in Arms before, but it's, it's just a little ability marker where you can tell your squad to hold. Now, if your squad holds within this area or within uh, your sort of uh, distance, they can get squad points uh, from doing so. Now, again, I'll show you. So you tap R1. And you can see there's a little red marker in front of me. I can go all the way out with that red marker. And let's, let's call in the smoke screen here because maybe we want to attack that way. And eventually you'll see a smoke screen will come down there. And uh, maybe we'll be able to attack effectively from this side. And if you've done that, you can tap it again and say destroy that target. And we can move and attack towards that area down there. And there'll be a blue marker saying move here. So your team knows where to go through uh, doing that. So the NCO class is really important as well because... Um, one of the main uh, issues with the NCO class, or one of the best abilities, sorry, should I say, is depending on where you are in the field, whether it be attacking or defending, your squad can spawn on you. So it's 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 good to stick it uh, stick together to stay alive if you're playing as the NCO, because again, if you're in this shit, you can squad mates can uh, spawn straight on you directly instead of like spawning uh, behind the lines and having to run all the way. So it's an important class. So just bear that in mind if you are using the NCO. You've got your command wheel and you've got your ability wheel. Alright, so this next section of the tutorial is going to be about weapons, um, squads which you can use to help you improve at the game, and then also some shooting tips and stuff, just to get you um, up to up to scratch with how the game is, I suppose, and how it flows and how to do well in it. Um, but firstly, we need to look at weapons. Now, uh, one of the big mistakes a lot of beginners make is, uh, when they come into the game is they used to play in Call of Duty and other games like that, so they always go for the automatic weapons like the machine guns and the MP18s and, and things like that. Now, what I recommend uh, doing on this game is playing uh, as a squad and using a rifle straight away. Firstly, because it's the most common gun in the game, uh, the rifle. Any, any rifle, it, they're very common. Every squad has them. They're the main weapon in this game. Uh, bolt action rifle I should say as well um, and also the people think they're more difficult to use and in some respects they are you have to be accurate with them but it's a great way of practicing at the game it's a great way of getting better and um, one of the best rifles to use if not the best rifle is the Lee Enfield Mark III and it's the sort of standard Commonwealth rifle if you like and the Tommies have it the Canadians have it I think the Anzac troops uh, they should have it I think and um, it's just a really accurate rifle it's got 10 rounds you can't fall off with it now if you're playing as the central powers the other rifle to use is the Car 98 again it's got simple iron sights um, it hasn't got as many rounds as the Lee Enfield but it's still accurate still packs a punch and it's a great way of practicing and it's the most common gun on the um, central powers side so as I've said, rifles are the best guns to start off in the game. Now, one of the best squads to use because of rifles and things like that, I think, are the Tommies. Because the Tommies bring like an all-round mix to the party. They're a pretty, pretty good class, pretty solid class. And again, you get to use the uh, Lee Enfield rifle. But then you've also got the Patton rifle, which is a bit more of a rare... Uh, rarer gun but it still does the job it's still accurate and stuff but it's also the tommies give you an opportunity to use different guns maybe some of the um the webley re revolver for example so the um the pistols and, and things like that but they've also got the gunner classes and they've got grenade classes so it's it's a good way of you seeing all the different um parts of the game if you like or different sort of uh, gunplay type of stuff but again the rifles the Lee Enfield rifle uh, is the main Tommy's rifle so it's it's a really good class to start with now if you're on the central powers any of the central powers uh, classes are good the one that I like the most is probably the Pioneer Regiment they've got some great guns and also um, they've got some cool abilities with the, the flamethrower and stuff and again it's another way of you uh, having a look at the game 
The Shudson class is also really good because again, if you want to, even if you do want to use automatic rifles or weapons, should I say, they've got uh, the machine gun. Um, they've got probably the best machine gun class in the game, the Shudson. So um, they've got different. So they allow for like different gameplay scenarios and things. So again, it's really uh, they're the, probably the three best uh, starter squads to play as the Pioneer Shudson and then the Tommies. But I mean, the all all um, squads in this game have the the pros and cons. But I just think the Tommies are a pretty good standard one to uh, begin with. Uh, good to practice with anyway. All right, so I've just created a quick custom game. I've jumped into the Tommies role. I've got the Corporal uh, role as well, and I'm using the Leonfield rifle, just like I suggested before. I also want to pick up on something like I said. So the Pattern 1907 was a rifle. It's not a bayonet. I'm thick as shit. Apologies for that. Now moving on from that. Uh, as you can see, you've spawned in, you've got this, this is the rifle I'm on about, it's a pretty standard rifle, it's decent, it's got 10 rounds, so if you miss a shot, you've got, you, don't, you know, the repercussions of missing a shot aren't too bad compared to other rifles because you've still got, you know, 9 rounds left, um, so the magazine size is pretty big, or round size, um, I'm not sure how, how to say that one. Now, um, so you can aim down sight, hold your breath using uh, L3. And this feature is really important because, especially for them long-range engagement uh, engagements, you need to have a you need to hold your breath a lot of the time just to get those accurate shots. And as I was saying earlier on in the settings, it's not always possible to do so, um, which is why I've got the toggle on. So sometimes aiming down sight and just shooting straight away is a better option just to get that quicker reaction, that quicker shot. Uh, another technique, a lot uh, you'll see this on the hints by they've done himself, uh, themselves as well. It's going down into the crouch position, allows you to hold your breath, um, not for longer, but more accurately. Now, standing up, you can see it bounces a bit more. Sitting down, it's a bit better. And then prone's obviously even better. So, if you're using a sniper on the game or something, always try to be in crouch position or prone position where possible. So, in this bit of gameplay here, you can see I'm using a mix of um, holding the breath and not holding the breath. Because, as I said before, it's not always needed, it's not always possible. And sometimes you just have to you just have to shoot and hold for the best. You can't sit down and, and hold your breath. It just doesn't work. And um, a lot of the time, if you've done a, a game of like reactions, who can ever shoot first wins the battle usually, uh, because it's just really you know it's very rare you get hit markers. So hopefully you can see from this little bit of gameplay. So one of the best ways to put your shooting uh, into practice is by playing squad defence. Now all you want to do is uh, go to back to the main menu, click squad defence, and then when you're on the squad defence menu, you want to press square to create a squad. And as I said, try pick the Tommies because they're, they're pretty much the best uh, solid standard regiment to use, I'd say, or faction. Now the best thing about squad defence playing by yourself is there's no repercussions to dying or anything like that, so you don't really have to worry too much. When you're not playing with teammates, it's just you versus the enemies. Now this technique I'm going to use here is like a bobbing technique, so you lift up, you shoot, and then you go back down for the reload. And it's just a good way of using the cover effectively, but it's also a good way uh, of drawing the enemies to you, and it's a good way of getting them to shoot at you. So you can bob up, they can shoot you, you go back down. And then once you know they're reloading, you go up and finish them off. So it's just a good way. It's a good little technique uh, to use. And again, you're using your cover effectively, which is massively important in this game. So I'm trying to explain everything there that's extremely important in this game. Or I think that are sort of the main features. If there's anything that I've missed that you're still confused on, just comment below and I'll try and help. And um, I've got an entire, um, I think it's like, nine minute video on, on shooting alone on the uh, channel to look at so if, if that's shooting at the end if the shooting tips weren't um good enough or if you wanted a bit more of them there's an entire video on the channel somewhere to um to find i'll, I'll link it in hopefully but uh thanks for watching cheers